I'm pretty excited to announce uh, our our uh, heroic producer Chris, along with the legendary uh, Bitcoin podcast host Peter McCormick, is gonna is gonna join us to talk about his acquisition of Bedford uh, Football Club. So we've got Peter McCormack in the house joining us right now. Just give us a, a minute or two to get oriented here. I see him. You. And uh, hey, Peter, you ready to go live? <laughs> ready to go live, man. Oh, he's always ready. This is awesome. All right. Uh, Chris, are we good to go? All are right. going live now? In- yes, sir. You wearing a fucking Tottenham hat. I am. <laughs> let me go. Let me go to the bathroom. Go <laughs> He's out, man. He dipped. He saw that hat. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, do you want to do, do the, the uh, ads, ads real, real quick? quick? Yeah, yeah. We'll run a couple of ads. We'll come back. Get Peter uh, situated. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Give us a couple minutes here. What is going on, plebs? We're going to take a break from our programming to tell you about the resurrection of our print magazine, starting with the El Salvador issue. Starting this fall, Bitcoin Magazine will be available on newsstands nationwide and at retail stores such as Barnes & Noble. Don't want to get off your couch, though? No problem. You can also go to store.bitcoinmagazine.com. So skip the line and get each issue shipped directly to your front door with our annual subscription. I'm talking four issues a year that contain exclusive interviews and profiles with leading Bitcoiners, actionable insights on the state of the market, breaking news and cultural trends, along with powerful photos and artwork from the best artists in the world. All right, we are back. Let's give a let's give a nice official introduction to Peter McCormack here. Peter, how's it going tonight? It's going well, man. Apart from your co-host coming in at Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bullshit. <laughs> what's what's your what's your grudge with uh, Tottenham? Well, I mean, all their fans are dicks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, they just are. I mean, they just... do you know what it is? I, I, yeah, the thing about Tottenham is, is that they constantly put themselves up there as like one of the big clubs, but but they're not. They're just not. They don't win anything. Like, I, th- I think the only trophy they currently have is something like, and this is true, it's something like the under fifteen girls champion. That's like all they have, and that's not a disrespect <laughs> to girls. I'm, just, you know, girls football is important. I'm just listing the only trophy they have is like this one. It's like under fifteen. Uh, and you know it's like this european super league thing that came off it was like all these big european clubs and tottenham is like why are tottenham here they haven't won shit like leicester should be there before tottenham yeah, yeah no, no i i've, I've always, always wondered, wondered so, so i was i always, I always thought, thought you were an, you were an arsenal, arsenal fan, fan for, the for the longest, longest, time, because longest time, time because of how, how much you hated, hated on tottenham, tottenham. <laughs> yeah no it's like all my schoolmates right all my schoolmates support tottenham and they're always like yeah tottenham of this that's like fuck off tottenham is shit sorry i'm swearing so much uh tottenham are terrible <laughs> Um, and I don't like them. Fair yeah. enough. I just, I, just, I, always, I always wanted, wanted to, know to know what your, your, uh, what your, your beef, beef with uh, Tottenham, Tottenham was. was. I, know I know you're a Liverpool, Liverpool fan, fan now, now, but, uh, uh yeah, yeah, no. I mean, how long have you supported Tottenham? Uh, uh since, since 2010, 2010, 2011. Have they ever won a trophy in that period? Uh, uh the, the Audi, Audi Cup. Cup. That's the only <laughs> one I count. <laughs> but <laughs> what? The, the Audi Cup? Cup? <laughs> What's that? I don't, is that like an American Cup? It was a summer tournament, I think, yeah. Well, like four teams. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. 
Peter, Why did the you only pick team, Tottenham? My, the, only the only team in any of the sports I follow that wins anything, anything is Bitcoin. Bitcoin so uh, that, that's that's the <laughs> team I'm on. I, I'm, I'm a big, big New York sports guy. guy. Why did you pick Tottenham? They, they had, had Brad, Brad Friedel, Friedel and Clint Dempsey, Dempsey on, the on the team back, back then, then, and they were Americans. Americans so. so I didn't I want to front line with Man United. I didn't want to go to Liverpool or anything like that. You should have gone to Liverpool. I mean, I I appreciate that, but unlucky man, you're gonna you're about to experience decades of pain. I already, I already do with all the other teams. teams. Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's the only thing that's that winning, winning it. So, <laughs> hey, well, Yankees suck at the moment. I'm a, I'm Mets, a Mets fan, fan so <laughs> oh, Mets suck at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Gi- Giants suck. Uh, Jets suck. All right, all right we, don't we don't need to go, go blasting blast my team. We're here about, about Bitcoin, Bitcoin and Bedford. And Bedford. <laughs> so, so, Bitcoin and Bedford. Yeah, yeah so, so we'd love hey, to hear how the deal went through. I know you're kind of you broadcast from Bedford. That's where you're from. So ultimately, how the deal go through. And, and um, what, what made, made you decide, decide to buy the club? The club? And, then, and then I guess, I guess did, did they, they accept Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Were, were they hesitant, hesitant about it? Did, were they accepting of it? I guess how did the deal go through? Yeah, so this is something I've, I've wanted to do for a long time. I mean, anyone who listens to my podcast will know I've been talking about this as long as I've been doing the podcast. I've always said I was going to buy Bedford. Um, but I've been talking about this since I was probably like 14. Um, my dad will tell you that. I've like, I support Liverpool, right? But I don't live anywhere in Liverpool. That's like me living in New York and supporting like a Miami team. Uh, but, you know, when I was a kid, there was no big team around here. And you always want to, not everyone, because some people are cool, but I wasn't. You always want to follow a big team. So I followed Liverpool. Uh, but I always wanted Bedford to have a team. So I was always like, well, how, how do we do this? I want to buy this team and get like Bedford in the, in the Football League, ideally the Premier League, <laughs> even though that's a completely <laughs> ludicrous idea. But like I've always wanted, and I never knew how I could do it. And then 2017 ball run, I kind of tried, but I just didn't really have an idea and, and uh, or a plan to it. But now, you know, four years later, I'm like, do you know what? We can do this. And I, I kind of, in fairness, I've, the, the inspiration this time to go back and look at this, the inspiration is my, Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy and Bukele and El Salvador. If you, you watch the Bitcoin, it's like, we're, crazy right we get behind a bitcoin idea if if it's a bitcoin idea we get behind it and i was like do you know what i think there's a couple of things i can do here i can fulfill my dream and buy a bedford team get them in the league i can promote the concept of sound money and bitcoin and uh and i can do this by bringing the community together and so yeah i mean i i approached bedford town there's two two teams of bedford I approached bedford town made them an offer for the club they turned it down they're in the eighth tier so I went to Bedford FC. They're in the 10th tier, made them an offer. They accepted it. Uh, I have I haven't actually done the transfer. I asked him if he wants Bitcoin. He was like, I don't know. I don't understand <laughs> it. But like, that's one of the things about this thing is like, when you go and look at that, uh, you know, we're all going to make it uh, attempt to buy another team, Bradford. It's clearly crypto bullshit, right? It's clearly mm. going to be like, let's buy this team. Let's sell NFTs. Let's do a fan token, all that kind of bullshit. Like, Bedford is going to be the Bitcoin team, but there's going to be no players aren't going to be forced to get paid in Bitcoin. You know, if you come into the bar, you're not going to be forced to pay in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just like this going to be the soul of the club, but no one's going to be forced to use it. You know, one's going to have to buy Bitcoin for this to work. This is really just going to work because I'm from Bedford and I want to make it work. And I've got an army of crazy Bitcoiners who are going to get behind this and, and help me. So, so yeah, here we are. We've, we've got a team. Um, made so much progress in the first kind of week or two it's, it's insane but yeah i'm so excited dude so is there is there a, a learning curve do you have to educate the players and the people or are they bringing themselves up to speed or how does that relationship look like do you know what the f- the first step is for me to learn about running a football club before i teach them about <laughs> bitcoin because that's that's the thing we've got we've got a football club at the moment and i'm learning very quickly and god i'm learning so much uh it's there's, I think very obviously, very early on, there's a lot of things about running a football club that can be improved. Um, you know, for me, and by the way, football people are always going to get pissed off with my interviews and hearing me talk about this because I'm going to be very critical. These things can be so much more professional. And and uh, so what I'm trying to do is I'm basically in the process of taking over, putting a team in place to run the operations professionally. But yeah, I mean, the plan is, is I'm talking to a Bitcoiner who's also a footballer. He wants to come and play. And uh, if we do it, we're going to run Bitcoin meetups at, at the ground and we're going to get the players in. We're going to teach them about it and we're going to teach the fans and completely voluntary. You don't have to, but if you want to come along and learn about Bitcoin, we'll teach you about Bitcoin. 
Bec- every every home game eventually will get to a point where every home game before the game there's a Bitcoin meetup. If anyone wants to come along and learn about Bitcoin, we'll do it. Not forced down your throat, completely optional, but we will be giving Bitcoin education as part of it. That's amazing. Um, how about in terms of you know marketing this as a Bitcoin team? Are you going to get the Bitcoin on the jersey? Dude, you've not seen the jersey designs. I didn't see it yet. No, where do, where oh, are they? Man. Listen, uh, let me show you. Well, if you if you go on to my, I mean, I can't send you it here, but uh, yeah, basically, our if you go on, I tell you what, go to the Royal Bedford uh, Twitter page, right? If you go into the media, you'll eventually uh-huh. scroll down and see it. But like, nice, you can nice. see, I mean, you can see the merchandise, the sh- the keep, you know, you can see the hat, the water bottle, with the logo. Oh yeah, I think of you, you know, the wizard, you know the magic internet money wizard. yeah 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 i think yeah, yeah, makes him it. our mascot and getting like someone dressed up as the wizard <laughs> running up and down the side of the pitch but if you keep scrolling you'll see the pictures uh the shirts it's like an orange jersey with a big bitcoin b on the side and there's a black jersey with a big oh big now i see it oh this is yeah. great with satoshi oh this is awesome yeah they're awesome i mean look we're gonna sell thousands of those but yeah i mean look uh, w- like the soul of the club is bitcoin the soul of the club is also Bedford, but the spirit is definitely international. And, uh, you know, we're going to make this work. We are going to create a, we're going to create a football league team, hopefully a Premier League team. I love it. So what are the, what are some of the struggles of learning to run a, a football club? Oh God. Um, managing PR is definitely something. Okay. So everyone wants it to fail in football. Everybody in football wants this fucking to fail. It's so funny. You're going to see all the articles and the comments. And, and I think there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, like football people are very traditional. It's like, well, our club has tradition. We've played in this ground since 1892 and yada, yada. And the history of this club is so important. And then they see somebody coming in and say, I'm going to build a uh, football club on Bitcoin and get them in the Premier League. And they're like, you're just another, sh- they think I'm a charlatan, right? Because they've had so many charlatans coming into football, made promises, not deliver, got bored and left. So they just, you know, they they just doubt it and they're cynical and yada, yada. But basically any PR, whatever it is, they want to make it negative. So like my manager resigned yesterday. So they want to make that negative. But like if I do something cool, like if I get a new manager or I you know, sign a player, they're going to make that negative. They're going to make everything negative. These football people, they want this to fail and they want it to fail it badly. So managing PR is like, is, is a real challenge that I'm learning about. It's like, and I have to make a choice. It's like, do I want to manage PR and try and make the best for it? Or do I want to go like, fuck it. What will be, will be. You write whatever you want about us, but I'm going to deliver. I'm going to absolutely crush this. And you know, if they hate the Bitcoin thing, whatever. The truth is, is if this works and commercially works, this will lead to more people having access to more football facilities in Bedford. Grassroots football. You know, we will create mm-hmm. a women's team. We will create a youth setup. We will cre- create a reserve team. You know, so we are about what we can deliver in football for Bedford, but we have this commercial opportunity globally with the Bitcoiners to make it work. So, I mean, look, dude, maybe some of it's jealousy. Maybe some of the people are looking and going, wish we had this. But... Mm-hmm. My question to them always is, what is your problem with us making money? Like, what is the problem? Like, if if I do something stupid and I screw up, fair, fair enough. But, like, what is the problem with us making money? Like, why do you have an issue with that? Like, why do you care if we have an international fans? Wouldn't you love it if your club had 150 million crazy fans worldwide who would buy your shirts? Of course you'd want it. No one would, no one would turn that down. So I just think it's a combination of, like, people are cynical because they've seen false promises before and... And they're like, they lump Bitcoin in with all the crypto, NFT, fan token bullshit. Yeah. And it's going to be fun to watch you go up against teams who, out of a lack of options, have embraced crypto sponsorships and NFT sponsorships. Mm-hmm. I want to crush yeah. those more than anyone. Yeah, yeah. that'll be Those will be great matches to watch you guys crush them. <laughs> Yeah, because the problem is, is they are the charlatans. They need the crypto for their thing to work. They need people to buy fucking nfts of players or frogs or rocks or jpeg bullshit we don't we don't need any fan to buy any bitcoin to make this work this is a group of people coming together and saying do you know what we're gonna we're gonna create success and we're gonna do that with a mission and the mission is to teach people about sound money and you know financial responsibility and financial literacy and yeah power to us man 
Absolutely. Chris, Chris, what are you thinking? You've got the, uh, you've got the football background more so than I, so what, what do you think about all this? Yeah, yeah Peter, Peter, I mean, I mean even, even though, though I'm a Tottenham, Tottenham fan, fan, I will, I will support, support this team, team and, you know, you know Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's the money for enemies, for enemies so, so we, we can, can have, have a common, common ground, ground there at least. least. Um, I, guess I guess my thing, thing for you, you uh, and, and nothing, nothing against, against you, but I, I know the football, the football community might be just as passionate as Bitcoiners, Bitcoiners which, which is hard to say. But, but I know, for example, example, Mike Piazza, Piazza was a retired a Met that, that went, went to buy a team, team in Italy and ultimately ended, ended up bankrupting them. And, and I mean, I, mean, I don't I think he's welcome in that part of Italy anymore. Like there's death threats for him. So I guess what would be your reassurance to people that support the club, more long-term fans, to reassure them that you're bringing you're, you're doing, doing the best, best thing, thing for bedford, bedford and the club. the club well i'm not i'm not going to lose any money personally on this i, I you know it's just not going to happen and this isn't a lot of people are going to buy clubs i think there's two problems there's I, there's either the rich guy who comes in who pumps money in and then ultimately he's like oh, i can't keep doing this because I'm, i keep running out like there's that and then there's the commercial model most of them can't build a commercial model that's successful they struggle because if you pick by a local club your commercial opportunity is at like five, 10 mile catchment area of people who live around you. So they struggle to make it commercially work. My catchment area for this is, is 150 million Bitcoiners around the world, which is a growing number. My catchment area has got, I've, I've already signed up 30 people who want to run international supporters clubs. I've got so much pent up demand for my shirts and merchandise. It's unreal. And I just, I can't produce them quick, quick enough. And um, so all I'm saying is I'm building a commercial model that means we will be sustainable long term and can invest in uh, local sports. So, but look, they've heard it all before. So all I say is like, fuck it. If you don't trust me, just wait and see. See what I can do. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I guess, guess you've, you've been, been in, in the Bitcoin, Bitcoin space long, long enough, enough and, and you are obviously passionate, passionate about football, football long enough. enough. Do you, do you worry, worry about, about if, if we, we follow, follow the same, same cycles with, with a crash, crash, you know, a Bitcoin, Bitcoin crash and other cryptocurrencies crashing, that, that would flee uh, potentially fans or supporters, supporters away from it because of that? Yeah, that's a tricky question. That's a good one. But it's a good question because, you know, if people because of our team go and buy Bitcoin and then they lose money on Bitcoin, then obviously they're going to be like, oh, it's like they're full. But I'm not going to be telling anyone to buy Bitcoin, right? Yeah, and we're going to teach, teach them about it and telling them to. But we don't need, for this club to work, we don't need the price of Bitcoin to go up in the short term. You know, maybe in the longer term, maybe because we have a Bitcoin treasury, we know if Bitcoin goes up over the next eight to 10 years, that's really good for us. And I would expect Bitcoin to do that, but not in the short term, you know. <clears throat> and I don't, you know, if you're thinking, well, will people buy shirts or will they buy sponsorships in a bear market? I've run a podcast through a bear market and I still sold sponsorships. You know, there are still businesses out there trying to acquire customers. But it, anyway, we might not have a bear market because the whole cycle might be broken anyway. Who knows, dude? I think, I think you yeah. and I and, and most, Bitcoiners most Bitcoiners would love, love that, that, but uh, I, don't I don't know, know if that, that holds true. true. I guess, I guess only, only time will tell. tell. Um, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need a bear market to make this work. I need a commercial model that works. Mm -hmm. that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Uh, I, guess I guess my, my next, next question, question, so obviously the goal is to get to the Premier League. League. I, think I think when I when last checked, course, you guys are in the 10th division. division. So, so I, I guess, guess what would be, uh, I know that, that the, what was the, the club, club that was bought by Gary Neville and um, all of Salford. Uh, Salford, uh, Salford yes. yes. And, and obviously they've been had pretty good luck with getting the club promoted pretty quickly. I guess, are you trying to go more of a long-term time horizon? I mean, it would be perfect to do it in nine seasons, nine promotions, but I think that would be a little unrealistic. Yeah, but there's a non-zero chance we can do that. That is, that is true. true. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, listen, the way I see it, the way I see it, because it is a ridiculous ambition, but why set out to do, why set out to come third, fifth, mid? Like, why set out for an average target? It's like, what is your dream? Like, I've had this dream since I was a fucking kid. Yeah. yeah. So why, what, if somebody says, what's your ambition for Bedford? I don't want to say to get in the football league. I'm saying my ambition is to, to get in the Premier League and, and win it. Probably can't do it. It's a lofty ambition, but that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason to set that the goal is to say, well, if that is the goal, how do you do it? You know, it's a bit like if somebody wants to, you know, you've got a runner and a runner who maybe go to the Olympics. What's your goal? Well, to win it. And the reason you say to win it, it's like, what do I have to do to go and win that? 
So for me in my head, it's like, what do I have to do to go and do this? Okay. And so I split it up into two things. There is getting in, well, three really. There's getting into the football league, which is six promotions. There's getting into the Premier League, which is another three promotions. And then there's winning the Premier League. Let's break it into bite-sized chunks. Have teams gone from non-league into the league? Yes. Have teams gone from the league, like League Two, to the Premier League? Yes. I mean, Brentford just did it. Have teams won the, the the Premier League that you didn't think would? Yeah. Blackburn did it. Leicester did it. So let's 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 just do it one at a time. My first goal is to get in the football league. How do I do that? Well, I have to have a better because it all comes down to the manager and the players. Do you have the right players and the right infrastructure to get out there and win? Yeah, how do I do that? Well, I have to be able to afford the best. And not necessarily the best, but like at least a, com- a side that can compete in an infrastructure that works. So how do I get in the football league? This is a lot easier. This is about being able to you know, go out there and compete in the transfer market. I have to have the best commercial model, and I do. My commercial model year one is as good as teams that are already in League 1 and League 2. I've already sold half a million pounds of sponsorships. Like I've been doing this for a week, and I've sold half a million pounds of sponsorships. That is probably more than the entire revenue for every team in my division and the division above put together. Mm-hmm. You That's know, a, 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 a low-level team in League One, which is two promotions from the Premier League, will do about 1.6 million in revenue, right? I'm already done with nearly a third of that, and I've barely tried. I haven't got any merchandise out there. <clears throat> so financially, I'm going to have the ability to sign the best players and the best managers, hopefully within the right infrastructure so we can get those promotions. But I think, I think league football is a reasonable goal. So what do you do when you get in the league and you get into league two? Do you go, all right, did it, I'm, I'm done, I give up? You go, no, fuck it. How do I get in the Premier League? How do I do that? That's a more tricky proposition. That, for me, is comes down to one massive unknown variable, but I'm going to raise money and I'm going to hold it in a Bitcoin standard. Uh, sorry, in a Bitcoin treasury. And that mm-hmm. Bitcoin treasury won't be touched for like, eight seasons. And I want to raise an eye-watering, obscene, ridiculous amount of money for a club this size. One that nobody will understand, right? It just doesn't make any sense. I want to raise 15 million. But Chris, if I turn around to you, I'm going to ask you both the same question. Chris, eight years' time, what do you think the Bitcoin price would do? 1x, 2x, 5 What do you think in the next eight years? Eight years. Um, I mean, I mean from, from right, right now, now, if we're saying, saying assuming 50K, 50K, I would, I would assume, assume somewhere, somewhere between, between a million, million to 4 million, million I, think, I think, in that, in that time, time frame. frame. Wow, so you're going for a 20 to 80x. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about you, Alex? Yeah, I had targeted 1 to 5 million was what came to mind. That's my... In eight years? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going... I'm going to go way more conservative than the two of you. I'm going to go 5 to 10x. So we're going to go 250 to 500,000 in, in eight years. That's pretty conservative. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I raise a 50 million treasury, in eight years, I'll have between... 250 and 500 million in as my capital okay <laughs> as my capital reserves yeah. yeah bear in mind when i'm in league two these clubs are all on razor thin margins right premier league teams are all in debt if we by the time like in eight years time if we hold that 50 million and bitcoin does a 10x we will be the most well capitalized football club in the world we will have a treasury of half a billion Everyone else is in fucking debt. We also have (laughs) rampant fans around the world and a commercial model that's working. So if I've got half a billion in the bank, can I make an attempt to get in the Premier League? Hell yeah. Because to get up from League 2 to League 1, I need 2.5 million. From League 1 to the Championship, I need 4 million. From Championship to the Premier League, 30 million. They're they're not guarantees, but they're the kind of budgets you need to try and make that happen. With the right players and the right infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So it is a non-zero chance because we have the power of the Bitcoin community behind us and we have the power of sound money and the power of low time preference. You know, someone turned around to me and they were like, 50 million, you could go and buy a club for that. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I could probably buy a club in the championship for that. But there's a couple of reasons not to do that. Firstly, what's the best I can do? One promotion? That's not exciting. And they're never going to win the league. And also, if I buy a club of 50 million, I don't have any money left. So what do I do? And can my commercial model work? Yeah. But if I buy a club that's terrible and tiny, I can literally build a club suitable, sustainable 
over a nice like eight year low time preference time scale. And while I'm doing that, my treasury is going up and up in value. So by the time I'm going for the Premier League, I've got this treasury. Okay, so stage one's done. We got in the league. Stage two, we got a half a billion treasury and go for the Premier League. Stage three, win the Premier League. Fuck, fuck those, man. Like if I get that far, it's a it's a happy problem to try and solve. But I can, I I'm certain I can get us in the Premier League. Sorry, I'm certain I can get us in the Football League. Football League to Premier League. If Bitcoin does a 10x, I'm pretty certain I can do that as well. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. My my question would be: uh, Let's assume let's assume Bitcoin trades flat for eight years for some weird reason. Um, yeah. How much of the treasury, like what is the Bitcoin strategy for the team um, outside of, you know, the sponsorship capital coming in and support from Bitcoiners? What other changes are you looking to make to the club? Yeah, so, uh, you know, if our revenue model is, say, 1.5 million this first year and it costs me, worst case, and it shouldn't cost me, it costs me 200,000 to run the club. I've got 1.3 million in profit that goes straight into the treasury. Same again next year, straight into the treasury. So there is a one goal is to be commercially viable and to constantly support our treasury. Secondly, is to manage a uh, two, like two communities. First one is local. Like we have to get fans in bed for coming down and watching the team support them. We've got to do that. So in January, I think in January, I'm going to be running a fans forum in the town and renting out the corn exchange. I'm going to be inviting anyone in the town to come down, hear my plan. Let me tell them the story. Try and get fans behind it, get people to come to the ground. And then I'm going to manage this international strategy of creating this disruptive football brand, which stands for something globally, which people get behind. And if we're commercially successful, which I fully expect, that is going to feed down to supporting grassroots football in my town. And we will build pitches and we will set up teams and we will support grassroots football. So the changes I'm trying to make is like, I want to make this a very viable commercial business that absolutely supports grassroots football and like football football people listening be like oh you just want to corporatize football it's like football is corporate like even if your club's shit and you've got no money it's still corporate because you still got to pay the wages you still got to run your ground so you have to have a commercial model so what are you saying is football clubs can only have a shit commercial model they football clubs are only allowed to like blood and sweat and survive on fine margins why why what a stupid idea no we're not going to do that we're going to be commercially successful and that's going to lead to more opportunity for playing football in the town yeah, yeah i think, I think that's, that's great, great. So, so i guess, I guess I'll, I'll flip, flip this back, back to you peter with, with the eight-year eight year time, time horizon, horizon that you gave alex, alex and i for price, price. So, you know, you know in professional, in professional sports, sports, in football, or American football, or your football, baseball, baseball whatever, there, there seems, seems to be a copycat mentality among, you know, coaches, coaches or managers or owners. owners. So, so, if you, you start, start to see success and you get promoted, get promoted one, two, two three, three times, times while you have, have the, the first mover advantage, advantage what, uh, I guess... I guess what, 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 what would you, you think, think that, that if they start, start copying you, if, if that, that would be another roadblock, roadblock for you getting up the promotion? promotion. You, know, you know, if basically like, like everyone copies Sailor in terms of the MicroStrategy playbook, playbook and everyone, everyone in football starts copying you for real, real Bedford. Bedford. Well, they're not real, not real. 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 <laughs> like Real Madrid. So listen, yeah, that's that's a potential. So what, what can they copy? They can copy having a Bitcoin treasury. Yeah, that's, that's cool. They can. No one's root. I don't expect. It's a bit like El Salvador. No one's really copied them yet. But in four years' time, when their treasury has gone from whatever it is, 60 million or whatever it is, to like 600 million, other countries are going to be like, huh, fuck, should have done that. And they might copy them then. I don't expect anyone, I don't expect Manchester United next week to go, oh, what's Real Bedford doing? Oh, we should do the same. So that's not going to happen. No one's going to copy us then. Even if they do, wow, that's great. What a great thing. Like, other clubs are considering a Bitcoin standard. It means our message is working. It means people understand that sound money is important. So that's super cool. But the other thing they can't do, what they don't have, they can't, they can't become the Bitcoin team because we've, we've taken that now. That's ours. You know? uh, no other team. Other team can try. And even if they do, what do they have? Do they have the, are they doing it because like, they've heard it and they want to copy it? Do they have this? Is their chairman... Does he have a podcast with 1.3 million Bitcoiners listening every month going crazy? No, so we've got this real first mover advantage in terms of capturing that audience. We are the team of Bitcoiners. But look, if others do it, great. I mean, it's awesome. Like if Manchester United tomorrow said, we're going to have a Bitcoin treasury, that would be awesome. 
because it means another we've we've got another one another one who understands it means we've got further to that goal of having sound money in the world that everyone uses so i support anyone else doing it i just don't think they will and even if they do we've got first mover advantage love it so are you planning to do any uh taking uh some notes out of sailor and um and Bukele, are you planning on issuing some sort of Bedford bond on liquid or? <laughs> no, it's a good question. Not exactly, but I am looking at the idea of making the club equity uh, as a token on liquid that can be traded. So not a shit coin. You can actually, if you want to buy 10% of the club, you can. It's just issued as a token rather than like a token on liquid rather than like a certificate. And I think that makes sense. Like, I have no issue with doing that. I think that's a good idea. That means anyone, you, Chris, anyone in the Bitcoin community says, I want to buy some of this, they can do it. Anyone can own part of this. So I'm definitely looking at that. I think that's a good idea. Uh, as a bond, no, I'm not. My treasury is my bond. Interesting. Yeah, that would that'd be really interesting if you released uh, equity on liquid. That sounds fun. Do you, do you think, think that like, you would... Okay. I was just going to say, I, I think like everyone's going to want a little bit of this. You're not going to be one I left behind, right? Everyone's going to want a piece of this, whether it's a share or, you know, if a share is a hundred dollars, everyone's going to buy one share. Do you think you would, are you, you going to follow, follow a similar, similar treasury, treasury setup, setup to uh, what, what you, you run, run for your company, company or, or does it have, have to change for the football, football club? club? Do you need a little, little bit more fiat reserves, fiat reserves in order, order to run, run the club? club? We definitely need fiat reserves. Absolutely. More than I need. Um, but I think the way we'll do it is slightly different. I think what's most likely going to happen is that at the end of a season or, or a financial year, we will take whatever profits we have and that we don't think we need for investment in the team in the next year and then put that into the Bitcoin treasury. You know, because that's the money. Like, I think the way I think about Bitcoin, there's no point putting money in a Bitcoin treasury that you might need in the next three to six months because the price might drop. It's ludicrous. I, the only thing I've ever put in my business is Bitcoin, which is profit that I just don't need. Like I don't need now. I don't need six months. I don't need in two years. It can sit there as long as I need it. And we'll do the same as a club, you know, profits that we've got that we know we don't need for the next three months, six months, a year, two years, that can go in the treasury. Anything which we think we need, we're not going to play the volatility game. And we don't need to do that. Yeah. yeah. So excuse my ignorance, uh, to football, uh, both of you, but, uh, are there thoughts about getting the players some kind of Bitcoin stipend in a small way or a way for fans to donate uh, to them directly via lightning, things like that? There is a potential, I think, eventually to do that. Um, yeah, we have thought about that, but I think it. I'm reticent to do too many things like that. I'm reticent to do too many things where it looks like we're trying to force Bitcoin down people. Like I say, Bitcoin is our soul. We are a company. We're a a company, yeah. Well, I mean, we're a club, but we're a company that runs on a Bitcoin standard. That's first and foremost. And we will teach financial literacy to people who want to learn about it. Maybe we will have all the players listed on the website, each with a QR code, and maybe you can send sats to them. That's maybe something we will do. Right now, though, it's we've got so much other stuff to do. We've got to take over the infrastructure of the club and get it right. But it's not, we don't want to make, we don't want to force feed people Bitcoin because it always comes across as a bit gross. Like, you must accept but we don't want to do that yeah that's not what we're going to be about yeah absolutely um what's what's outside of bedford uh you know what's going on in your world what's uh how's bitcoin treating you lately dude there's nothing outside of bedford right now bedford's the bitcoin <laughs> center of the world uh look life's good man podcasts are going well um we're about to have a record month which is cool i'm back to doing trying to do all my interviews in person uh that's how i started the podcast these fly around and do i i like doing them in person we just did a, a sprint in miami dc and new york we recorded six weeks of shows super super cool like all great interviews really good people giving up their time we're planning for the next trip which is going to be God, start of february doing uh we're going to go over to the west coast going to do uh san francisco and la and again going to go and do a sprint going to do 20 interviews in 12 days and and then god texas in march and then miami obviously in april for the bitcoin show but yeah i'm just splitting my time between making the best show i can and like running my team and yeah, outside of that I'm just waiting for christmas to try and ignore all this covid shit trying to get on with life how you doing 
Oh, we're doing well, man. We're trying to make uh, we're trying to make the biggest Bitcoin show in the world to 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 compete with Peter McCormick. <laughs> Dude, no, listen. we're just we're, we're learning you... so much about streaming and podcasting, and it's great. <laughs> you you guys crush it, man. The event last year was awesome. The event this next year is going to be just well, I say last year it was this year, wasn't it? The event this year was awesome. The one next year is going to be off the fucking scale, man. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped for it absolutely yeah i can't wait i can't wait to uh it's just nice to be in the presence of bitcoiners i know you're traveling around doing your thing but mm -hmm. we've been we've still been remote quite a bit so it'll just be nice to be around people with that energy are um, you in nashville i'm not uh we do meet in nashville but i'm up in the east coast i'm by new york so i love nashville i went for nashville for my first time this year and i fell in love with that city it's it's amazing yeah, I think you did. Uh, you did an event there with. Did you do it with Preston and Marty, or who were you down there yeah, with? Yeah, I did, and and I did an interview in your office down there. But I'm f completely fell in love with Nashville. Nashville's a fucking cool place. Yeah, man, it's it's a good time, good climate, uh, good people, and and freedom. Food. I mean, it, yeah. Oh yeah, great food. Hot. Chicken. I mean, that's just it. <laughs> so you're kind of. Do you feel? Um, more tethered to to bedford now or because you're kind of a, a traveling guy how do you how do you split your time yeah i mean look the way i've got to do it is we're gonna we did this sprint it worked we recorded six weeks of shows in 13 days and i'm back here and and that's the way it's going to work every six to eight weeks i'm going to go out to the us i'm going to record 20 interviews and i'm going to come back and run my football club but the podcast is number one that supports the show that's my career and in the background i run this football club but I'm going to make both work, but I want to do the interviews in person. So you know, I'm just going to keep coming out the, to the US and doing it and crushing it with the Bitcoin guys. Come out to Nashville, come see you guys, and it's the way it's got to be. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Before, Before you, get you get going, going Peter, Peter, I know we have, know we have a couple, couple questions, questions, questions from, from Twitch and YouTube, YouTube right, right now. now. I don't know if you sure. have, have some time, time that we can ask. ask. Yeah, man, of course. So, so first, first one comes, comes uh, and, and it, it says, says Peter, Peter, although it would, would not, not be required, required would you consider, consider offering benefits, benefits for those that, that use Bitcoin related for teams, teams such items such as tickets, uh, merch, or whatever else? else? Would there, there be maybe a discount or benefits for using Bitcoin over fiat? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, I've not thought about that. And, <laughs> hmm. I need to think that one through, like the incentive model for that and why I would do that. And I understand why other people do, but like in the end, does that mean, like, do we want their Bitcoin or do we want fiat? You know, we need a mix of both because we've got a fiat business to run. Um, I don't know. I need to think that one through. One thing I, I, I am going to do, those shirts, I'm going to make shirts cheaper for those people who live in Bedford. And that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good, good uh, local, local marketing, marketing scheme. scheme. We got, we got another got question, question here that was, was are players going to be getting paid, paid in Bitcoin? Bitcoin. I, assume I assume you could give them the option, option but... but look, if they want to, they can. You know what? But like, we're not going to force it to them. You know, there's one guy who wants to come play for us. He wants to get paid in Bitcoin. He's a Bitcoiner. There you go. He works. Um, I'm not going to say actually, but he's like he's a known Bitcoiner, and if he wants to be paid in Bitcoin, that's cool. But the other players, it's like, you know. They... I've spent time with them. They don't even know what Bitcoin is. It's like completely new to them. And I'm you know, happy to teach them, but there's no requirement. Like if they want to fire, but I, I just don't want to force it down people's throats. One, One more yeah, question I'm, here. I, I'm sure with time, sorry to cut you off, Chris. I'm sure with time, they'll, um, you know, they'll come to feel that morale boost that the employees of, for example, MicroStrategy feel, or or even Bitcoin, you know, our own company, we all get pumped when the Bitcoin price goes up because, you know, you know, you're holding your treasury in Bitcoin. It's a good, good morale booster. Yeah, sure it is, man, but it sucks when it drops. <laughs> it does. Uh, all, right, all right, one, one more, more question, question here. here. Will, Will you be using, using any form of analytics to build your team more efficiently? I know that's, that's more of a nuanced, nuanced football talk. talk. Yeah, listen, not not at this level, no. But certainly, I think by the time you get to the football league, absolutely. You know, Brentford have built that model out and they've proved it works. Uh, you know, what players you should be signing at what age, what you know, you know, who you should be moving on at what time. Absolutely, that's part of the commercial model of football now. Yes, we will be, but we're too small now. 
we, the kind of analytics we're going to be using is a little bit more like what we're going to be doing is scouting other teams, how well are they playing, what are the players we need to watch, to help coach our team to be ready for each game. We're going to do some of that work, but like the hardcore money ball kind of stuff, you know, we're, we're, we're way off that yet, but definitely we will do that. All right, I think, I think it's, it's good enough questions, questions here for the live stream, Alex. Alex if you've got, you got anything, anything else. else. Yeah, I don't know, Peter. Uh, closing remarks. Uh, you know, what are the maybe the near term steps for you and this team? Yeah. Oh. Well, listen. Look, thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. It's great to talk about this. Um, yeah. Look, the near term goal is to uh, put in place the infrastructure that I need to run this club in the most professional, organized way. You know, that has to be part of the DNA of the club. We run the back office professionally. We run the team professionally. And the players go out and feel like they're looked after. That's absolutely my my goal right now. And I'm, like, I'm working on that against headwind. Uh, after that, it's going to be a case of, you know, how do we get, how do we do something that's good for both Bitcoin and good for the local community? And, you know, I'm going to be attacking both. They're both equally important to me. I want to support my town. I love Bedford. It's a funny shit little town, but I love it. And I want good stuff for it. But I want good stuff for the Bitcoiners. That's my tribe. I, I want good stuff for them. So, yeah, it's just, I'm just going to be working my balls off, dude, trying to make this work. Yeah, building building the Citadel right there at home. That's great. Yeah, man. The Citadel. Well, Peter, well, Peter it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure talking, talking to you. you. I know. Uh, I, don't I don't hate you for being a Liverpool, Liverpool fan. fan. Hopefully, Hopefully, we can, can share a pint, pint and, uh, at, a at a Tottenham Liverpool, Liverpool game, game sometime. sometime. Dude, I was at a game the other night, and Harry Kane should have got sent off. I, I, agree, I agree, actually. actually. While, While watching, watching it again, again, I was like, ooh, that's, that's not, not a good, a good tackle. tackle. But I'll take, take the two Jota, Jota, Jota should have had a penalty, but at the same time, you guys should have been like 4-0 up at half time. I agree. I agree. We, we missed, missed a couple, couple chances, chances there. there. But, but pleasure, pleasure meeting you, Peter. Peter. Um, I'm excited, excited for Ben for Chris. FC. And, uh, thanks, brother. Thanks, thanks for coming, coming on. on. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, great talking to you, Peter. Have a good evening. All right, guys. So what a great opportunity we had there to talk to the great Peter McCormack about his football club, recent acquisition of Bedford FC. Um, next up, I mean, I think we should give you guys some Bitcoin. That was a that was a long interview. So uh, on screen, you'll see a QR code to download the uh, Earn Carrot app if you don't have it yet. Um, and outside of that, we're going to put a code on screen. You can put this code into the carrot app to earn actual Bitcoin, with you, which you can withdraw to, to a wallet of your choice uh, later on. So someone should be winning that now. Let us know if you win, guys. I love to shout people out. We've got a lot of things happening in the comments right now. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe for newcomers. Um, we're going to post this uh, interview with Peter later on tonight uh, so you can watch it back. Um, and now that you have uh, the Earn Carrot app and have some Bitcoin in your wallet, I think uh, it's time we'll take a short, uh, short break and be back for our daily dunk. Take a quick commercial break here, and we'll be right back with you. 